So this is the second session and in this session we're going to be looking at getting started with MicroZamod. So we'll start off by introducing the policies. We'll then go on to look at the definitional policies in a bit more detail. And lastly we'll look at the tax and benefit policies but only very briefly as these will be covered in the third session. So we start off once again with our user interface and as I did in the previous session I will be switching from the PowerPoint slides to the live version of the model to demonstrate some of the concepts that we go through. So we start off with our list of policies on the left hand side and the policies are named after the standard Euromod conventions and I'll be um, briefly talk about this towards the end of this presentation. We then have on the far right hand side the description of the policies and as you can see um, each policy description is preceded by a three letter acronym. So we have DEF for our definitional policies, INC for our income policies, SIC for our social insurance contribution, TAX for our tax policy and BEN for our benefit policies. We then have what is known as the spine on the far left hand side of the user interface. And again, um, the spine is the ordering of the policies. And I'll be talking um, a lot more about this towards the end of the session as well. So if we switch over to the live version of the model, we'll see that we have our list of policies in this col column over here. We then have our spine which is numbered from 1 to 18, which is the ordering of the policies. We then have a description of the policies on the far right hand side. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, these are all preceded by a three letter acronym describing what kind of policies they are. So we have three types of policies in MicroZamod. We have what are known as definitional policies. For example, these are our operating policies. We then have our tax policies. These are, for example, personal income tax or VAT. Um, we then have our benefit policies. And in the case of MicroZamod, we, have, we only have one benefit policy, which is the social cash transfer. So we start off by looking at our definitional policies and in MicroZamod we have five definitional policies. We have what are known as uprating factors. Um, we have, and I'll be talking about um, what all of these mean in a lot more detail as the session progresses. We have um, what are known as income concepts or income lists. We have tax units, constants, and our last definitional policy is our standard output at the level of the individual. So our operating factors and constants may need annual alteration. And again, I'll speak about why this is the case as I go through this presentation. Our income concepts or income lists and our standard output um, at the level of the individual may need amendment, but only if a new grant is introduced. And our tax units um, definitional policy will really need amendment. So we start off with our first definitional policy, which is our operating factors. So this policy um, inflates the values in the input data set to bring them up to date and is used together with the operating indices tool. And again, I'll be demonstrating all of this on the live version of the model in a second. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the underpinning data set for MicroZamod is currently the LCMS 2010. And therefore, we need to um, adjust all values for inflation for the year 2015. And this will also need to be done for subsequent years, such as 2016, 2017, etc. And the default inflator that we use is the consumer price index. However, other specific inflators can be specified, for example, um, we can have earnings, which can be inflated by the annual change in average earnings from the labor force survey. So if we go over to our um, live version of the model and look at our first definitional policy, which is uprate. It's also the first policy on the spine. 
we'll see that this policy is made up of one function, our upgrade function. And I'll be speaking about functions um, in a later session. So we specify the name of the data set um, to which the uprating applies. And as I've mentioned before, um, this is the 2010 Living Conditions Monitoring Survey. And the default um, uprating factor is the overall CPI. However, as I mentioned before, we can have um, other inflators, such as um, an earnings inflator, which we use to uprate income from employment and self-employment income. And again, I'll be speaking about um, all of these variables and what they mean and how they're constructed in a later session. So if we go to our country tools tab, which is our third tab in our list of tabs, and we go to the uprating indices. So here we have our uprating indices, and this is where we specify them. So this, these are the indices um, that we use to uprate our data set. So we have various um, indices. We have our overall CPI um, for different years from the year 2009 to 2016. And we have our food CPI, which we use to upgrade our food variables, our non-food CPI, which we use to upgrade our non-food variables, alcohol, tobacco, transport, and our earnings inflator, which we use to upgrade earnings. So this is where we specify um, our uprating indices. So our next definitional um, policy is our constant policy. So the, these are, for example, social benefit amounts, tax thresholds, um, VAT rates, excise rates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if we look at our um, PowerPoint slide, we have a screenshot of the constant constant policy, which in this case is called const def underscore zm. Again, we'll talk about the naming conventions a bit later. So in this policy, we usually specify monetary amounts, rates, um, tax thresholds, um, and other amounts that often change annually. So again, I will move over to the live version of the model where I can show you our constants policy. Again, it's called const def underscore zm. And again, it is made up of only one function, which is called def const. And here we have a list of constants. So for example, um, our social cash transfer amount, which is 70 um, Zambian kwacha per month, is specified in this policy. And um, we also specify our VAT rate, which is 16%. And it is always good modeling practice to specify um, your constants in the constants policy rather than in an actual policy. And we'll talk about this um, again in a later session. So here we have some examples of constants. For example, we have the employee and employer social insurance pension contributions. Um, we have the rate and the upper limit. We have the upper limit for turnover tax, which is 800,000 um, Zambian kwacha per year. And we have um, the opaque beer excise duty per liter rate and the VAT rate, which is 16%. So our third definitional policy is what is known or called income lists or income concepts. And basically an income list is an aggregate of several, several variables, which is either added or subtracted to build that variable. And it is important to remember that with income lists, um, we need many different income concepts are required to simulate taxes and benefits. So for example, the income components included in the means test for social transfer or the income components that make up taxable income. So the policy ILDEF underscore ZM specifies which income components relate to each income concept or income list. And as I mentioned earlier, it should not be necessary to amend this policy very often. So here we have an example um, on our user interface of the income 
concepts or income lists. So as I mentioned before, the name of this policy is called ILDEF underscore ZM. And if we just take one income list, which is original income, um, which is number 2.3 on, on the model, we see that original income is called in microsamod it is called ILS underscore ORIGY. And we see that this income list is made up from several different other income components. So we see that it, if in order to get original income, we have to add income from employment, income from pension, income from self-employment, income from property, income from investment, excluding interest, income from interest on savings, income from private transfers, income from other non-agriculture, and income from agriculture. So that is what makes up the income list original income. And again, we can go over to the model and look at this policy. So our income list um, definitional policy is our second policy on the spine. So if we open that up, we see that we have um, 24 income lists or income concepts. And again, if we look at our example, which was in our PowerPoint, which is original income, again, we have our name specified. Um, in this case, this is ILS underscore ORIGY. And again, we see that this income list which is an aggregate of several variables which are added to, to give us original income. As I mentioned, the income from employment, pension, self-employment, etc., etc. So those are our income lists or income components. Our next definitional policy are our tax units. So tax units are groups of people, for example, individual, couple, family, or household. And what tax units do is that they determine who is included during policy simulation. So for example, personal income tax is calculated at the, at the individual level because the individual is um, the person liable to pay personal income tax. And an income-based means test for future social assistance benefit might depend upon the income of the applicant and his or her spouse. So that would be a different tax unit. So each tax unit can be defined in various ways. Um, and this is described in the policy TUDF underscore ZM. And again, as I mentioned before, it should not be necessary to amend this policy. So again, if we go over to our model, we'll see that our tax units are third policy on the spine. And in the case of microzamod, we only have three tax units. Um, and if we look at our description of um, this policy, we have our household tax unit, the family tax unit, and the individual tax unit. And as you can see, this the, in, the family tax unit has been turned off for both 2010 and 2015 as we, we don't use this specific tax unit. But if we briefly look at, at one of the tax units, if we open up the household tax unit, we'll see that again, this tax unit is made up of one, made up of one function. Um, which is in turn made up of um, five parameters. And again, we'll speak about functions and parameters in, in a later session. So we have the name of the tax unit. In this case, this is TU underscore household underscore ZM. Um, we have the type, which is household. And we have the description of the type, which is all members of the household belong to one unit. Then we have the dependent child condition, which states that um, the child has to be equal to or less than 17 and has to be um, age has to be greater than zero. So these the, these are the conditions for the dependent child condition. And then we have two, um, the last two parameters which assign the dependent child of the dependents and assign partners of dependents. So that's our tax unit policy. We then have our tax policies. And in microzamod, we have three tax policies, which are income tax, value added tax, and excise duties. 
So as tax policies can be extremely complex, they're only likely to need amendment if, for example, one is testing out ways of financing a new or extended benefit or grant through the tax system. And again, we can look at our tax policies on our model. So we have um, in our microzymon model, we have three ta tax policies, which we can briefly look at, which is turnover tax. So in our microzymod model, we have three tax policies, which we can briefly look at, which are turnover tax, income tax, and value added tax. And I'll be going through all of these policies step by step in the last session of um, our sessions where I walk through the entire model and explain all the different policies. So our next definitional policy is our benefit policies. Um, in this case, this is our social transfers. So in the case of MicroZamod, we currently only have um, one benefit policy in version 1.4, and this is the social cash transfer. We have um, the farmer input support pack. However, this has not yet been modeled in this version, and also the homegrown school feeding scheme, which is which has also yet not been modeled. And again, as I said, I'll be going through the benefit policies in a lot more detail um, in later sessions. So we can briefly look at the benefit policy on the model. So we have two um, benefit policies, or rather we've separated them into the social cash transfer for rural areas and the social cash transfer for urban areas. You'll see that we have the homegrown um, policy and the farmer input support pack program which have not been modeled and that is what that is why they have been turned off so just to go back briefly to the spine which I mentioned um, at the beginning of the session and each policy is numbered and ordered in the main window the policies are executed in order by the program, so it is therefore very important that policies which depend on information generated by an earlier policy are positioned after that policy. So the ordering of the policies on the spine is very, very important. So again, we have our spine, which is the ordering of the policies. So again, we have our spine, which is the ordering of the policies. And we can briefly look at that in the model as well. And so we have our spine, which is numbered from 1 to 18. So um, I'll briefly speak about the naming conventions behind um, the policies which Euromod and MicroZamod use. So Euromod and therefore MicroZamod requires that the variables in the input data set before the simulation and the output data set after the simulations adhere to a specific naming convention. So the variable names are formed by combining a series of acronyms which together identify the variable and distinguish it from all other variables. So the first letter in the variable um, name references the broad category of the variable and the next two letters reference the relevant subcategory within this broad category. So for example, if we take um, the variable called YEM, Y-E-M, um, so the first letter, Y, stands for income, and this is the broad category of the variable. And then the next two letters, E-M, stand for employment source, and this is the subcategory within that variable. So the variable YEM is actually an income variable and the income is waged or salaried employment. If we take another income variable, um, YSE, again the broad category Y stands for income, it's an income variable, and then the SE stands um, for self-employment. So um, this income variable um, the source of this income variable is self-employment. So this is income from self-employment. If we take a look at one of our benefit um, variables, it starts with the B, which is the broad category. It stands for benefit. 
and the last two letters SA stands for social assistance. So this variable is a benefit and the benefit, the type of benefit is a social assistance benefit. So what happens if we have two or more different social assistance benefits? So for example, if we have two or more um, social assistance benefits, we will um, distinguish between these by um, assigning a numeric identifier for the first social assistance benefit and then a, a different numeric identifier for the second social, social assistance benefit um, and so forth. So if we have, again, um, a benefit for social assistance, we start off with our broad category of variables, which is B, um, followed by the SA, which stands for social assistance. And then we will have the numeric identifier 01 for the first social assistance benefit, 02 for the second, 03 for the third social assistance benefit, and so on and so forth. And again, very importantly, um, to note, all our simulated variables have the suffix underscore s. So for example, bsa underscore s is our simulated benefit from social assistance. And bsa01 underscore s is our simulated benefit from social, is our first simulated benefit from social assistance. So if survey respondents are asked the amount in Zambian Kwacha of social assistance benefit they received in the past month, this is reported, um, this reported variable would need to be called BSA. And when we simulate the amount of social assistance benefit that the person should have received, then this simulated variable would need to be called BSA underscore S. So just to give a brief recap, the first letter of the variable name identifies the broad category of the variable type. And we have a list of um, um, various variable names. So D stands for demographic, L for labor market, T for tax, S for social insurance, B for benefit, as we've just seen, X for expenditure, Q for quantity, um, A for asset, and S for system. So the data requirement document details all the variables in the input data set. And this is quite an important document to keep on hand um, to um, just to know which variables um, that the model uses. So now what, we, what we're going to do is we will now spend some time exploring the model, identifying the different types of policy, and in, in particular becoming familiar with the definitional policies which form the basic framework of the model. Thank you.